Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you joined us and I'm so excited to, for you to meet our guest, Demetria Makuti. Yes, Makuti, isn't she beautiful? And I'm sure you would not be able to guess her age. I could <laughs> not believe it, but, so but you have two children. Yes, 25 and 16 years old. Yes. As, I mean, she looks 25 herself. <laughs> Um, well, she's one of the head nurses, one of the nurses at Barnes Hospital. She was Rick's nurse. And so God just, I mean, we had an encounter with the Lord. It's just been an amazing story. So today I got, um, I was able to hear her testimony. And this is the very first time she's ever shared it. Tell us where you're from. I am from Jamaica, the beautiful island of Jamaica. And I'm from a small town in Jamaica called St. Thomas. Um, I was born and wow. raised there. Um, I know by my grandparents, um, both my grandfather and my grandmother. My grandfather wasn't my biological grandfather, but he was my grandfather. So I want you to tell us your story. We're, we're just going to cut to the chase and, and go right from when you were a child and then tell us what you've gone through and where you're at today. Yes. So growing up in the highland of Jamaica, in that small town, it was not one of the best of the best, I must say, um, comparing to some of the life that I've seen other kids have in the United States. Um, there were some hard times, I must say. Um, there were times that I remember as a kid going to school, which makes me humble. It, um, I'm not gonna say, that I regret it, but um, it makes me really humble and makes me appreciate things because going to school back, back in the island as a kid, I remember going, I only have one shoes. Um, I can remember vividly that sometimes when it rains, I have to put like a piece of cardboard or something just um, to prevent. So I think those things has molded me to be a humble and to give back all the time because I do give back a lot. You never forget your small beginnings. Mm -hmm. no. You know, Zechariah 4 and 10 said, who has despised the day of small things? It's those little hinges that open big doors and that's what God has opened big doors in her life. Um, you've seen it all along the, the way, but tell us what happened during your childhood. Yeah, so, um, as I said, growing up with my grandparents, they, they gave me everything that they could have given me and I, I just love them for what they did but growing up in a big home you know I think they let their guards down to a little bit too much where as a kid being around some of the older family mm -hmm. members you know I think they trust them where they didn't even know what was happening behind closed door and I've never shared this story before first time wow so I send her up some hearts will you <laughs> so I must say that as a kid my they didn't even know that I was molested over and over and over and over um, from what I, age did it start it started at when I was eight years old and it continues on until I was 16 13, sorry, when I was 13 years old. Um, this went on for a while, which I did not share with anyone until now. And it's surprising that I'm sharing it live. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so it did happen. And it, I would say that it becomes so like I was so comfortable with it because there was a part of me that was missing because my dad passed away when I was a baby, just six months old. So I never get the bond to be with mm. a, a father. I know my grandfather was hard working. I don't remember ever being embraced wow. and say, you know, I love you. I wow. know they do things and they did it out of love, but they weren't the parents to give us a hug and say, I love you. 
I know they did things bad and they did it because they love us, but never heard the word, I love you. Which is so important it is. that it connects your heart and, and keeps that bond strong. You talked about how that you dealt with the shame. Oh, yes. Yes, I dealt with that shame for all my life, and I would say most of my life. And sometimes it still haunted me. But I must say that I learned to trust God, and I know who He is, and I know that I've, whatever I've gone through, He was there, and I know He's a healer. So all that shame that I've went, I've been through, I must say that. Well, let's, let's go in what the word says. Isaiah 61 and seven says, instead of your shame, instead of your shame, you shall have double. Instead of the confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. He said everlasting, uh, they will uh, experience double in their land, a double portion, everlasting joy will be theirs. So that's what God does. He takes what would be shameful, and you talked about it even, even though it wasn't comfortable, even it can be a comfort zone, and we can become used to just the routine of you know, being abused and because it was somebody that needed something from you. Is that right? Yes. You talked about an open heaven that came. You were invited to a meeting. Yes, I Tell was. us about that. So I remember when I was 19, I remember I was invited to a church convention. And when I went to that convention, I remember they were worshiping God. And I saw the heaven open. Wow. And I, it was like I saw Jesus just open his arms wow. to welcome me. And that wasn't the first time it had happened. It did happen when I was much younger, but I did not take it seriously. But I know I did question it and like what it is like to be a Christian, but I never follow my faith. I never follow the path. But when that happened the second time, that's when I decided that I think... God has have a plan for me and I did give my life over to to God and I start worshiping him. Tell us though that it had been 20 something years and this is when I met her last week, was it last week or a couple, yeah, weeks, a couple ago, weeks ago when Rick was in here before. As many of you know Rick had surgery yesterday and you'll hear from him tomorrow. God is he's doing fantastic. Um, but you said it had been 20 something years. Yes since you had been with God or had that communion with God and, and really fell out of relationship? Yes. 20 something years and so this is so awesome to me and I'll share what happened in the hospital just recently. Hosea 6, 1 and 2 says, come and let us return to the Lord for he has torn but he will heal us. He has stricken but he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us on the third day he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. And so that's the open heaven that you're talking about. Heaven came down and filled your soul and has renewed you since, since that day. Isaiah 45 and 8 says, rain down you heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord have created it. So you were allowed to see, he allowed you to see the open heaven with his arms reaching out to you and really it's your real father you longed for a father your real father your creator and I love this and then I want to hear we're gonna hear about what happened in the hospital recently Malachi 3 and 10 talks about when we give to the Lord and now see as you give this is what happens for you he says try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a, such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it and so I just want to share our sweet Demetria that I couldn't wait to find her on this trip back to the hospital. Um, so when we were checking out, you were his, his nurse. They had talked about mission work because Rick has been to Jamaica. And um, on the way out, I said, Demetria. And I hugged her. I thanked her for her care for Rick. And I 
the Lord dealt with me to give her a scripture. And when I began to share it, I want you to take it from here. Because this, this is nothing about me. Yes, this is the love of God. Me. And it was another yes. open heaven in that moment. So tell me, uh, because you began to release the hurts of the past, yes. your abusers. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that moment. moment oh, that was also another special moment. Miss Debbie, I do not know her from nowhere. <laughs> Believe me. And she, before she left the room, she said, is it okay if I pray with you? But I must say this before I say whatever I have to say. For the past, before I met her, I wanted, it, I must say, I'm a backslider. I'm back, black, back. She slidden. was. Yes. She was. So I was struggling with myself finding back my faith with God. And so when she offered the words that she she said that she has a word for me and she prayed with me and I must say that there could not be anyone but God that put her in my midst to deliver the message that it's time to get back on the road of my faith and I remembered we prayed she told she gave me the words and I remember like I just start worshiping God in a different speaking in tongues. That's right. Heaven came down and, and filled her soul, I'm telling you. I, I think I did forget that I was at work and I was in the hospital <laughs> room and I really but I'm not ashamed. And no. I always said I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I just started speaking in tongues and I must say that when she left, I felt blessed. And I know that God really have something in store for me and which I went home and I downloaded my Bible back on my phone. Wow, so thank you, Jesus. To go and, and I, I find myself doing things differently. I must say that, you know, I- Talking to God every day. Every day, because yeah, it's wrong. I would not even pray. Um, like wake up in the morning or before bed at night. So now I find myself doing those things. And I must say that, Miss Debbie, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, because yes. that's what he does. You know, the Bible says that our steps are ordered by the Lord. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in their way. And so when we make ourselves available, he'll bring, he'll bring you together with, with that person that God has for you to speak into their life. And let me tell you something. When heaven came down and filled her so she did begin to speak in that heavenly language. I mean, in so much that I'm sure they've heard something down the hallway. But she didn't care. Listen, she let God just pour into her. And she's pouring out now. So I think it's just a beautiful story. Story, and I thank you so much for sharing it. This is big, you guys. It's the first time she's ever shared her testimony, and she's back in communion with God. So what would you say to someone that has just felt like, you know, that uh, they've been gr grown cold with God or just stepped back away from Him? What would you say to them right now? I would say just find a little moment to acknowledge Him, whether it's going to be praying or reading a Bible scripture and he will fill our mouth because I didn't know how to pray again and I mean that when I goes on my knees at night and I start praying I just start and then I feel find my mouth filled with words and I will say that just find that small moment or interaction with God and everything else will fall into place and I will say God is awesome he is awesome you know something you said Demetria when I remember after you were you know, speaking in tongues and you felt that renewal, um, you said, this is God, because you had just prayed. You said, God, I need a change in my life. I want relationship back with you. You had just prayed that. Yeah. And then God just apprehended your heart. I mean, to God be the glory. I'm telling you what, I'm just so excited and so thankful. This is what it's all about, is bringing, bringing in the lost souls. Listen, let God's love let him love through you. It's somebody you're with. It may be someone that you're working with or someone that you're meeting for the first time. But he, lo he loves them. He's trying to get his love to them. And so, you know, what I would ask you to do, Dimitri, is to pray for those listening right now. Would you do that? Oh, sure, again. 
Most righteous and eternal Father, tonight, God, I just want to thank you for your presence in this small fashion, Lord God. You said we're two or three are gathered, you are in the midst, and I thank you tonight, God, for your presence tonight, Jesus. Father God, I thank you for all those who are on this broadcast watching, God. Yes. Father God, anyone that has any issue, Lord mm. Jesus, whether thank abuse, you, Jesus. whatever it is, a family member that passed away, or whether they're dealing with depression, whatever. Mm. Father God, I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that you may touch them, Lord God. Yes. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, you may be in you may enter their home, Lord Jesus. And Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you may take full control of everything, yes. Lord yes. God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that whatever they touch, Lord God, it would be blessed. Father God, I pray for this lady, Miss McNeely, today, God. I pray, God, you may bless her in her going out and in her coming in. Father God, you know her by heart. You know her by nature. And so tonight, Lord God, I want to leave her in your hands mm -hmm. that she may continue, Lord God, to Thank do you, what Jesus. she's doing, Jesus. Have your way tonight, God, I pray. As I say, thanks for all that you have done Thank and you, for Jesus. what you are going to do. In your precious holy name, I pray. Thank you. Amen. That is Thank beautiful. You, beautiful. Thank Listen, thank you for spending some time with us tonight. This was huge. Thank you for sharing, Thank Demetria. You so much. God loves you today. We love you and have a great rest of your day. All right? Thank you. Bye-bye.